Tommy, all right? Good, thank you. Good. How do you want to end the season then against Middlesbrough? Yeah, obviously with a, with a real positive performance. Um, we got the win last weekend. Didn't think it was a great performance. We certainly need to improve in possession, and that'll be a big part of our pre-season project. We've been fantastic at the back with sometimes last-ditch defending and great saves from our goalkeepers, but five clean sheets in eight. But yeah, it's a team that I, I really respect. I think they'll be at the in the mix next season with the good, the good balance of talent and, and experience they have. So it'd be nice to lay one last marker down uh, against a team that I think will challenge next season. Sometimes good when you win without playing well. What, what did you watch it back again? I'm sure. What, what did you think? What did you put it down to? I thought first 20 minutes. So uh, was excellent. I thought we were in full control, in and out of possession. Any time we lost the ball, we won it straight back. And then a series of set pieces for, for Sunderland knocked us way out of rhythm. So one is dealing with setbacks in games, sort of going behind or losing a bit of rhythm. How do you gain that momentum back? Um, and then two, it was just individual errors, really. Um, mainly in the final third, we couldn't sustain any pressure just because it would have get into good positions and then just individual mistakes. It was, it was one of those days for too many of our fo forward thinking players and and we struggled to get any real rhythm after the 20, 25 minutes. So that's what I put it down to. What's your sense this week? Final game away from home, miles away from Middlesbrough. How, how are the players? Yeah, I mean, it's it's this is the nature of this league, you know, Sunderland come to us and then following week, Middlesbrough, it's not an ideal one for the fans, the 12.30 kickoff, but the players are in good spirits. I've not once had to really squeeze them for enthusiasm since I've been in the job and at this stage of the season, that's healthy. Um, so that we go there with a um, couple of additions in the squad with Academy Products travelling, that's exciting for everyone. Uh, everyone in good spirits and and but yeah with a serious nature of we we want to go and lay one last marker down what about the rest of your squad i don't think portius is going to be involved any other issues yeah so portius um he's obviously a bit of protection for the for the summer ahead but also been on 14 yellow cards he's is is a, a grey area for me. I don't want to lose him for the first three of next season. So, Georgie's had that, this ongo ongoing um, groin issue. That again, another player. I know how huge the summer means to him. Um, so, not going to risk him. And Dennis has picked up a, a knee issue uh, last weekend. So, he won't be fit to travel. When the match is done, what happens next for you? Because obviously, you need to start looking ahead to next season. But what do you do? Do you take a break? Do you come back for a couple of weeks and then take a break? Yeah, so it's, it's a very different dynamic. It's my first um, sort of taste of it where the finish line is in sight for the players, but it's the, the starting line for the coaches. Um, planning pre-season schedules and, and loads and then recruitment meetings and then getting your staff together and really mapping out how next season looks, the targets and how we're going to achieve them. And that will all take place over the next two weeks. Because it's going to be your first one. That must be really exciting, doesn't it? Yeah, really excited about that. Um, trying to focus as much as possible on Middlesbrough. And then after Saturday, the, the planning for next season starts Monday. And, and that's something that really excites me. I feel like we're a team that would really benefit from a good pre-season with, with a new set of staff um, and, and really improve on the identity we've already shown. Who's going to guide you through that kind of process? Jimmy, or is it going to be a number of people? Yeah, it'll be a number of people. Jimmy's been fantastic. He, he goes back to the academy, as I, as I stated yesterday. He's, that was always the plan for Jimmy, and I know he's, his door's always open uh, across the car park. So um, we, there is space on the staff for, for one more. Um, we're, we're on the lookout for that. We, uh, we realise that that position should be someone with more experience than me, Damon and Armand. Um, so, so that will be... Um, a good addition, but I work with the, the physical teams, the, the medical teams to plan the, the pre-season, but I'm, I've done a fair few myself as a player, I know, what, I know what's needed. And how far are you down the line with that new addition? Are you, are you yeah, fairly far down, you know, it's, it's one that we, we don't want to announce yet, but it's, yeah, the, the club and I are working, working towards someone we have in mind and, and someone will be perfect for the, fit for the job. Some players have finished their seasons Already, you, have you got a list and a chart, or whatever, with with possibles? Yeah. So this is probably this is the newest sort of experience for me. I, I've done enough pre-seasons. I've done in, 
I've done enough sort of schedules and, and load plannings, but I've never recruited a squad together. So I'll be working closely with Gianluca Nani and, and, and the board, uh, as well as sort of picking the brains of my network at the, at the bigger clubs on, on what's available on loan. But yeah, it's a process I'm excited to be part of. And, and I realise how important it is to get the right players to, to, to achieve our targets. Do you think you're going to have a big say in that? Yeah, so so far I've been involved in all the conversations. We're collaborating really well with the board, um, and and yeah, I feel like my knowledge of the game is good. I've got a good eye for a player, and and yeah, it's really happy with the squad we have now. I think keeping hold of our best players is going to be an important part of the summer. And um, but I'm excited for the challenge ahead of building a, a squad that will be will be challenging. The final one, and going back to Middlesbrough, you played alongside Carrick. It sort of overlapped, didn't you? I think. Yeah, he was, he was my most consistent midfield partner, I think. Uh, for a Haiti or however many games it was I played for United, he would have been next to me for 70 of them. So uh, when you think of Michael Carrick, you just think class. He, as a player, as a person, as a coach, he just oozes class. Someone who, uh, when, when he spoke, the room listened. And yeah, massive, massive respect for him. Did you have to do all the work for him? Didn't you? Yeah, I, yeah, I was... <laughs> 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 no, I... I think in possession he did all the work for me, so out of possession I might have shared in it. Um, Tom, David Shearer was anyone you didn't mention in your list of players, is he fit or not? Yeah, so that's uh, uh, something that we've been trying to manage. He's, he's a player that's that's had a difficult time with injuries. He's someone who I respect as a player a lot, and we're just, yeah, we've managed him for a period of. Have a little bit of burnout, a few niggles. I thought I thought you could see in his performance at Southampton. He looked someone who's who burning out, and yeah, he's it's, it's just a, a player that we're just managing for, from now to the end of the season. Will he travel? Uh, he won't be in the match this squad now. Okay. Um, when you talk about next season and your plans, there's been a succession of predecessors who always talk about signing players at this level being a bit like a domino effect. You need something to happen somewhere else, or you need to sell a player to reinvest. Is that what you're having to work around as well? Is that you need other things to fall into place? Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll have to be creative in uh, in the market. Where I think my contacts and, and my experience as uh, as a player could could help that. I, I hope hopefully coaches would trust me with their players on loan. We we have a very large scouting network across Europe and uh, across the world. I'm sure the club have got really good. Players on their radar, yeah, but we're, the reality of it is we're, we're, we haven't got ma masses and masses of money to go out and, and blow. We have to be creative. We're, hopefully we keep our best players and, and yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly confident in myself. I can improve anyone that, that either I have input in signing or, or the club sign. The season on loan with Watford in the Championship for a young player can be a good thing, can't it? Yeah, exactly. And this is, I'll go back to my... My experience, I would um, pa a passion for improving young play uh, players was the reason I got into coaching, and that and that fire's well and truly burning. So any young player who, who was to come to this club, on whether on loan or permanent, I would be. Um, it really is an, an enjoyment of mine seeing the, those players improve, kick, and kick on, whether it be for us or whether it be moving to bigger clubs. Now, I ask you this because you're young enough. Did you ever play football management games? Does it feel like? You're now bringing it to real life. I did, but 14, 15 years old. So yeah, I, uh, I've I've never really been a big gamer, but yeah, now I feel like it's a nice feeling. You know, you know, but it's it's a feeling you've got to work incredibly hard for. You know, from, from sometimes 12 to 14 hour days in, in the training ground. But it's a nice feeling being res fully responsible for and overseeing everything and and for a club that you feel so strongly about. It's, it makes it even more special. So, yeah, I'm very grateful.